All right, so this lesson is going to be a breakthrough for those of you that are learning how to improvise, but struggling with knowing which notes to land on when you play a lead. This is a really common problem, and everybody goes through this. You you, you learn a scale or you know some some basic things, and you know kind of what your parameters are, but you don't know how to sort of wrap up a little phrase or a lick. And so you're not sure which notes you need to land on. And some of us can use our ear and go right to it, but some of us need a little more guidance. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about some very specific notes that you can land on over specific chords, which will make this so much easier. So I've got a little sample uh, blues song that we're going to be learning how to play. There's no jam track that goes with it. It's just a little standalone thing, which actually makes it very easy for you to practice and convenient. You don't have to get out of jam track. Let me play through that and just show you what that means. You're going to see numbers on the screen and you're going to be maybe confused by that, but don't worry, that's what this lesson's all about to clear that up and explain what I mean by these numbers. So it's a really simple little blues exercise, but with this, once you understand what those numbers mean, you're going to be able to improvise whatever kind of lead you want. It's actually a lot of fun, and it's not as difficult as you might think. So we're going to cover all the theory information in this video, but if you'd like access to the extra materials, the, the PDF, there's a PDF handout that I have that shows where these target notes are, as well as the tablature for the song that we're going to be taking a look at. Uh, you can get those extra things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP418. And also make sure to check out premium membership if you haven't. I have 10 years worth of lessons, all very in-depth and really targeted towards those of you that are learning how to improvise, just really designed to give you ideas for what you can do. All right, so we're going to be playing this in the key of B. It's a blues in the key of B. And so we're right here in the middle of the neck. It makes it easy, uh, at least visually, on the screen. And it doesn't matter which key we're in because there's no open strings here, so we could just move our hand up or down the neck and transpose and play everything we're going to learn in any key. But we're starting here, so that's where we bar on the seventh fret. And then these three fingers are making the E shape. So this is kind of home base when we go through this. So when, if you don't know what I mean when I talk about E shape, that's comes from the cage system. So you take your E chord down in first position, you move it up here, and then you bar where the nut was. And so anyway, that's what I mean when I talk about the E shape. So that's where our one chord is. And then we have a four chord, which is right here. I'm staying in the same neighborhood. Everything we're gonna be doing is right here. So we have a one chord, our four chord, which is an E. And so that's uh, using the A shape out of caged. And then you can always slide your four chord up two frets this way, this direction. To, to get your five chord. So there's your five chord, which is an F sharp. So B, E, F sharp. Okay, everything we're gonna learn is based on the major scale. It all starts at the major scale. So I wanna start with that. And this part isn't really designed for you to follow along exactly with what I'm playing in the major scale. I just wanna demonstrate this. So just watch in this. And if you don't know your major scale, there's five positions for the major scale. I have a lesson, I'll put that up on the screen right now. And you can go through that if you want to, if you wanna learn how to play the major scale in all five positions. And I connect them to these chord shapes. So the E position, the A position, so forth. Okay, so the major scale in two octaves from this E position. Now remember, we're playing a B chord, so we're gonna be playing the B major major scale, but it sounds like this. There's one octave. There's the second octave, all in the same neighborhood here. Now that major scale had seven notes in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you get to seven, it repeats. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It keeps repeating that way. So there's seven notes in the major scale. Once you get to the eighth note, it's called an octave. Octave means eight. So notice I'm talking about numbers here and not letters. We're not talking about specific note names in this case. We're just talking about the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's important because you can take this formula and create chords and arpeggios and all kinds of things. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a major chord out of this major scale. And to do that, you just take the first, the third, and the fifth 
interval in that major scale. And you put them together and play them in sync and you have a major chord. So if I wanted to play the B major chord or know what the notes are in a B major chord, I just look at the one, skip the two, we go to the three, so the one, the three, skip the four, and we go to the five. So one, three, five. That's the three notes that make up the B major chord. So it repeats one, three, five, and so forth and so on. So if I play them together, I'm playing a B major chord. Now, if I want to blues that up, I can play a B7 chord. Instead of just a B, we play a B7, or also called a B dominant 7. And that sounds like this. You can see how much more bluesy that sounds. So the formula for creating that dominant 7 chord is the 1, 3, the 5, and the flatted 7, not the 7. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you go up to the 7, and then you flat it. So when you take those four notes and play them together, the one, three, five, and seven, you're playing a B7 chord. And you can use that same formula to find any major chord or any dominant seven chord. It's the one, three, five, and flat seven. All right, so hold on, Brian. Where are we going with this, right? So some of you already know this information. Some of you are scratching your head trying to figure out why I'm, I'm going this way. The reason for this is those notes, the one, the three, the five, and the seven, those become our target notes for when we're playing a lead. Now, what are these notes? This is actually just an arpeggio. So you may be familiar with that term. I used to think an arpeggio was when you do these crazy metal sweeps, you know, because that's what my old association from the 80s. That's what I always saw when I saw someone playing an arpeggio. You can play them at any tempo. All it means is you're picking the notes out of the chord. I think the literal te definition is broken chord. So... That's an arpeggio, a B7 arpeggio. So let's learn those notes and we're gonna connect them back to this E shape. And I'm telling you, this is gonna get a lot easier once you get your head around this. All right, so grab your guitar and follow along with this part. So we're gonna start here on the seventh fret, sixth string. And then we're gonna come up here to the uh, sixth fret, fifth string, ninth fret, fifth string. So we have one, three, five. And then we got our index finger down on the seventh fret, fourth string. That is the B7 arpeggio. We're just going to repeat that now and play it in another octave. And to do that, uh, I want you to picture your, your chord here, right? Because that'll make this easier. So from here, we're going to go to the ninth fret, fourth string, eighth fret, third string, seventh fret, second string, and then pinky up here on the 10th fret, second string. So we have so now we have two octaves of the B7 arpeggio. One, three, five, seven. We just call that seven, even though it's a flatted seven. And we do it again. One, three, five, seven. And you can throw in this note as an, you know, we could keep going, but we start to run out of frets if we stay in this neighborhood, which is always the goal, at least for me. I try and compartmentalize these things just to make them easier. So the last note there would be your B up here in this position. So an easy way to think about this is to picture your bar chord. Picture your major bar chord. We're playing a lot of these same notes, right? And then picture your B7 bar chord, if you know how to play that. But you've got your pinky up here to that on that 10th fret, second string. That's one of the notes you're playing. And so all those, if you're just picturing those two chord shapes, you're, you've already got a lot of the notes, at least where they're gonna fall. But we need to be more specific about these notes. And this is where the magic starts to happen. So you need to be able to identify your ones. So this is your first goal, your first mission. In a B chord, using the E shape in this position, I want you to identify the three ones that you have. Remember the one is your B note, but we're gonna find the three ones. So the first one was that first note, which is on the um, seventh fret, sixth string. The last one was also on that same fret, first string. So that's two of the three, that's pretty easy, right? They're both on the seventh fret. The third one was here on the ninth fret, fourth string. So you have the one, the one, and the one. What do I mean by that? Well, even if you learn nothing else, if you just take this information, you can now play a lead, any lead, use, and so what I like to do is I take the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one, good old home bass that we're all familiar with, right? So off of this E shape, it looks like that. So if you know your minor pentatonic scale, pattern one, 
grab a little bluesy phrase, any little lick that you can do. And then listen to that last note that I landed on there. Look at that note. That's my B note, right? That's my one. Remember the three positions for the one? So that means if I'm trying to target the one, I can play whatever I want. I just need to land on one of those ones. I can land on this one or this one. So another example of a lick would be something like. Notice that note there. That's my one. Normally you wouldn't, if you're playing a lead, you're not gonna be landing on this sixth string very much anyway. It'll be this one or this one. So that's the one and how we target it. And don't worry, we have practice material to go through with that little song and that it really calls out each of these. Now when you're playing a lead break, the one, that one's kind of obvious, but what about those other three notes we talked about? The one, the three, the five, and the seven. Well, typically you're gonna land on, the notes that sound the best are to land on the one, the three or the seven. The five doesn't work so well. You can land on the five, and there are situations where that does work. I think of the song, When the Saints Go Marching In. Right, that's the five. Um, but in most cases, playing the five, it's just a lot easier if you just remember, try and target the one, the three, or the seven. When you do want to use the five is when you're playing over the five chord. Maybe a light bulb just went off for some of you, but that five, which we're gonna to get to in a minute, I know I haven't really spelled this out yet. There's the five in two positions here, but when you're playing over the five chord, then it totally works. But for the rest of the time, it's probably safest just to leave it out, at least for now, as you're learning how to do this. So, the one, the three, the seven. We just went over the one. Let's look at the three. The three, there's uh, there's two of them and when we're playing in this position. The first one's very easy to find. If you're playing your bar chord, it's where your middle finger is. It's the, in that position. The other one is that little extension that was behind the bar here. When, remember the three, as the first three that we got to? There's the three there and there's one there. You can land on either of those and it's gonna sound great. So you got... Hear that? Landing on the three. And then you got. So the three only works if it's in a major key. If it's a minor key, you're gonna have to play the flatted version of the third. That's all a minor chord is, is a flatted third. So listen. Right? Hear the difference? Versus if it's a major chord. Okay, so you can land on the, the one, you can land on the three. The other one you can land on is the seven. And the seven really sounds bluesy because when you think of a seven chord, like a B7, what gives it that bluesy sound is that seven. You can hear it. And you, a lot of this is training your ear to hear these sounds. That's really the big takeaway is when you can hear the one or you can hear the three or the seven, even before you play it, your, your brain hears it or your head hears it and then your fingers follow. And once you're at that level, you really are singing with your fingers. So the two spots that you're gonna find the seven when you're playing out of this E shape here, one is here on the 10th fret second string, the other, is right here in where the bar would be. So that'd be seventh fret, fourth string. You can land on either of those sevens to get that seven sound when you're playing a lead. Let me, let me improvise something here. So you got. Hear that last note? So you're seven. Hear how that works? It sounds so good because it's in that seven chord, the dominant seven chord. Or I could go right down here and play this one. So you can do whatever little noodling you want in the minor pentatonic scale, but try and target the one, the three, or the seven. All right, so now we've learned what we can play over that B chord or the B7 chord. But wait, there's more than just one chord when you're playing a blues, right? There's the four chord and the five chord. What do I play over that? Well, we're gonna do the same kind of thing. So remember our four chord when we're playing in the key of B, the four chord is an E. So we're gonna find our E, and actually I like to use the E, play the E using the A shape because it's right here. We're staying in the same neighborhood. Notice everything we're gonna do is right here. So we had our B chord, then we're gonna play our E chord. I'm actually playing it like this, playing an E7 or E9. But this is using the A shape out of Caged. So now what we have to do is we have to think the E major scale. 
which is connected to your A shape. Now I know some of you are going, oh no, now I gotta learn another major scale. You don't have to learn the major scale. You don't have to deal with that. I just wanted to point out that that's where these notes are about to come from. But we are gonna have to get the one, the three, the five, and that seven out of our E chord. Up in this position, it's a different position. Here's the good news though. It's almost identical to what we just played over B. So watch this, we have, we have one, three, five, seven, and then there's the one again. Now, to do the same thing, but for E, we just start on this string instead. So we're in the same fret and everything. We just move everything up a fret. Or, I'm sorry, we move everything up a string. So we're starting on the seventh fret, fifth string. Watch. Right? So all of that is for your four chord. Okay, so this isn't so bad. So we have our one, three, five, seven. Back to the one. Now here's where it's different because the guitar is in a different tuning. You know, we're, we're, we're tuned in fourths up until this point on the, on the neck. But anyway, what you have to do to finish this out from, from here is bar with your ring finger on the ninth fret. So you play strings three, two, and then you play string one up here on the seventh fret and then 10th fret. So, but look at what's going on. Think, Think chord shape. So you've got your A chord shape, and then the top part of your A shape, which I talked about in that cage lesson I did a while ago. And the top part looks like this, right? That's a little triad that you should be familiar with. It's a very common triad for a major chord. So once you get up to this octave, you just play the notes out of that little triad. That's our one, three, five, and then seven. And a light bulb right here, watch this. E7 chord. You Think of the A7 chord down to first position. Same chord, but you're playing it up here. So some of you are going, oh, okay, so I've got my E7. I've got my E7. There's two ways I can make it. And I've got this arpeggio. These are my target notes. So when you're playing a lead break, you can stay in the key of the song. You can stay in the B minor pentatonic scale, but when it's over the four chord, you're gonna to wanna to land on the one, the three, or the seven. Same thing we did over the one chord, but not, not the B one, three, or seven, the E one, three, or seven. The one, three, or the seven. So you need to learn where your ones are, right? Your threes, your fives, and then your sevens. And once you're familiar with that, it's all going to become so much easier. Let me give a little demonstration of this so you can see what I'm talking about. We'll go back to the B chord. That's our one chord. There's our one. There's our three. Back to the one. There's our seven. Now we go to the four chord. Look at that. What is this note that I landed on? That's the one of the four chord, right? Ah, so maybe that's the point where the light bulb goes off. You go, oh, you land on the one of the four chord, or I could land on the three of the four chord, or the seven of the four chord. The seven was up here, remember, or here? I could have went. There's the seven. And I'm still playing the B minor pentatonic scale, but I'm landing on the one, the three, or the seven of that four chord. And then to get to the five chord, all you have to do is go this direction, two frets. That's the beauty of the guitar. So whatever we did over the four chord, including the arpeggio, we can just go up one, two frets. So any of those notes are gonna work for the five chord. But the, the main note is your, uh, the one, that's the one that works the best when you're playing over the five chord. The one of the five chord. And actually for that, so the one would be here and here. But I like to use this position for it. It's the same note. But this is convenient because you've got your seven chord right there using like that C7 shape. And so if I'm playing a lead and I'm just staying in the key of the song, I find myself doing that quite a bit. This is only over the five chord, but I'll do something. Right? Or you'll hear this a lot in blues. Right? That's coming down to the five here. 
But that's what you're doing, you're targeting that five, and that really works best only over the five chord. The rest of the time, you're, you're doing the one, the three, and the seven. That's the formula that I've found that works the best. All right, so if you wanna practice everything we've talked about, I have it tabbed out, the thing that I played in the intro where I've got the numbers. Actually, you can go back and watch that now, it's gonna make a lot more sense if you want. But I have that for premium members, so you just go to EP, 418, go to activemelody.com, EP418, and that's where you'll get access to uh, the PDF files, which have uh, just a little handout so that you can have a quick access to where all these arpeggio notes are, and then also the tablature and the on-screen tab viewer for that little uh, song that you can practice. And as you're practicing it, listen to those tones, listen to the seven so that your ear can hear it, and listen to the three and how they sound different. All right, hope you've enjoyed that. We'll see you next week for something new.